Yeah, thanks, Domingo. Can you hear me okay? Wonderful. So I'm going to show a couple things here today. We have a uh, test stand uh, with a SMB0 and an SMB00 uh, here in our laboratory. And we've used this to uh, do some different research projects with EPRI and, and testing and so forth and development of some tools uh, for both relubrication of valve stem and stem nut. And we've heard a number of uh, presentations today uh, talking about uh, frequency of tasks. We've heard about it, assessing the condition of the grease. We heard about uh, relubrication of, of the stem nut, stem and stem nut uh, lubricant. And so I'm going to show this tool, which is called the stem key. Uh, last year's uh, conference, uh, Domingo, uh, Ken Brown, and I did a presentation talking about greases. Part of that was discussing uh, this tool. I figured today with this remote um, format gives me the opportunity to do uh, live demonstration. And like Domingo said, uh, feel free to ask a question uh, and uh, I can kind of show or demonstrate while I'm doing this uh, one of the benefits of going live here. So I've got the uh, stem cover here. It's not the right size, but it just kind of demonstrates what we would do is remove the stem cover to uh, access uh, the valve stem, uh, this being an SMB0. And the key components to the stem feet are a threaded adapter. And so this adapter has a pipe thread, which is going to be sized to match the size of the motor operator valve actuator, uh, the, the thread for the stem protector. And then on the inside bore, there is a straight thread. Uh, so I'm going to start by placing that adapter over top of the stem. So just making a couple of turns here until it engages into the uh, stem protector threads. And then this is the lubricator tool. So it just has a, a, a protection uh, for, for cleanliness there, a little cover. And when I remove that, you can see that there is a, there's a whole board inside. There is an O-ring here. And then you've got this straight thread cut into the outside of the tool. And this straight thread is going to engage with the straight thread in the bore of the adapter that I just placed there. And that's going to let me thread this down. And as I do that, that O-ring is going to engage the top of the stem nut. And so we're going to make a seal in this way. So just kind of put that over the top of it, slide it down, and now I can engage this straight thread. So it's just a little knurled section here that makes it easier uh, to, to thread this down and thread it on. And eventually I get it far enough that I can feel the resistance and that's going to be the O-ring engaging the top of the nut. So this is custom built to the correct dimensions because it does have to be narrow enough to fit inside of the uh, stem nut lock nut. And right now I've got that O-ring threaded down on top of that. So I've created this chamber which is connecting this zerk fitting, so I've got a grease zerk fitting here, here on top. It's going to allow the grease pressure to build, go down, engage with the top of the nut, and then because of that seal, force that down through the threads. And so at this point, I would just take a grease gun, put the cup over the grease gun on top, and then I'm going to actuate the handle to pump grease down in. And what that's going to do is it's going to push the old grease out. And for uh, the development of this, we did create a clear uh, 3D printed nut, stem nut. Uh, and some of you may have seen this in, in previous um, MOV user group meetings where I brought that along and demonstrated it. And it actually shows that the grease comes down and it follows the threads. And you can see that on the clear nut, pushing the old grease out, purging it out through the bottom, and then putting a new layer of grease onto uh, onto the stem and, of course, onto the stem nuts as well. So questions about this, is it going to clean the stem nut and the stem? No, it's not going to clean it. Uh, it's not going to strip anything that's hardened on there. But it is going to push the old grease out. It's going to push debris out. It's going to generate a new layer of grease in there without having to disassemble the valve, let's say. Now, this is not a complete, you know, in service running type of application because when this tool is on here, you create a drop of condition. 
you would not want this valve to actuate. You would not want the stem to get a signal to go up and down while you're on here. So you'd have to basically put the valve in the position that you're going to do this and keep it there with a with a lockout tag out. But it's not necessarily necessary to do, uh, to remove the valve or remove the actuator or anything like this. We can do it uh, while it's in in place, um, much lower time. Uh, you know, talking to uh, folks who've used this, like Domingo and some of his colleagues at Palmarity, they talked uh, last next year's presentation about uh, safety aspects of this. You don't have to rig uh, this out, up and out of the way, to get access to the nuts and lubricate. So one side pushing through to the other side is going to allow us to push that old piece out. Now the other, uh, another thing that was talked about today was about the condition of the grease, looking at the condition of the grease. And in addition to being able to lubricate, put a new layer of grease in here, we also have the option to come down in this area by the yoke and grab a sample. So we can grab a sample of the grease that's been forced out and either just do a visual inspection of that or there's a whole series of tests that we can perform to look at the condition of the grease, contaminants that may be present, can look for wear particles, you know, wear of the nut, wear of the stem, uh, and the condition of the grease itself. Is it oxidizing? Uh, is, it, uh, is it breaking down? Is it separating? Is it drying out? And so on. So it gives us that analysis uh, opportunity, uh, which is, again, one of the things that we're talking about as we get into these uh, frequency extensions, um, you know, looking at the condition of the grease, evaluating the condition of the grease is going to help us. Some of this can be done, you know, just looking at it, feeling it, and so forth. But sometimes we want a little bit more. So there is an STM standard that governs this. By the way, the the uh, testing of greases for MOBs was addressed uh, a number of years ago in a not so much an MOB uh, EPRI project, but um, but but a lubrication specific one called Effective Grease Practices. And there's an Effective Grease Practices guideline that Nick Camilli and I worked on that uh, talks about sampling and analysis of greases. So, so when this is done, you can then just back this off and bring that up. And uh, if you don't get too crazy putting the adapter on, it should almost come off by itself. But just in case it were to get stuck, if it were actually to be, uh, if this adapter nut were be to put in place into the, the taper of the threads, uh, we do include a spanner wrench you put the spanner wrench on there and you can get that off as well. So some of the designs of this have come about through uh, folks who have used the tool, giving us some feedback on its use, and so on. Now I talked about taking a sample of the grease. I want to show a couple options for sampling grease in the gearbox as well. But first I'll address the sample uh, that I mentioned that you could take it from down here in the oak area. And this is one of the uh, kits uh, that would come with uh, the stem thief. Uh, it has a number of different tools in it. It's all protected, so it stays clean until the time you take the sample. It has this plastic spatula. And you can get down in here and you could gather up the grease. Um, yeah, you could gather up the grease from the underside uh, yoke area. You can see there's, this is a no, no valve valve, but um, you'd be able to take that out and you can put that back up there. Um, and then the, the tools inside here allow you to, to transfer that over, take that grease that you have and kind of put it into this uh, syringe. And then the syringe can be transferred into uh, this container, which is the grease seat. So the analysis I talked about takes uh, around a gram of grease. It's actually 10 different tests can be performed with that uh, one gram. And this is all under an ASTM standard uh, for grease sampling and grease analysis. So that's one way to take a sample. And that's going to come about while you're relubricating the stem and stem nut with this tool. But what about the gearbox itself, looking at the condition of that grease? Well, you know, here's a, a possible access point uh, using this plug uh, in the pinion and worm gear engagement area. And there's really two ways to do this. Uh, one is using this uh, T-handle tool which has one of these grease thieves loaded into the end of it. And so you can see that I can actuate that. You move that back and forth and you see 
the red piston here staying the same in the same position. And then there's an adjustment that can be made here by how far down do I want to take that sample. So once I know where that is, I can set that depth. I can put that in through my opening and then core the sample. And this is an important thing about sampling greases is that you really do need to be cored. Uh, suction doesn't work very well on greases. Um, so, uh, so instead of trying to pull it out like a syringe, we're actually putting it down in place with the piston at the end like this until you get to the position you want to sample and then the bottom goes forward and pours the sample. So that's one possibility where you know exactly how far in what you want to go. If you're not certain, you can use the, the same tool with a different uh, device. This is also a grease leaf, but this one has a stinger prick on the end of it. So when I move that into an opening, it moves until it touches that surface, and then it takes that sample from that last little bit. So um, for something like this, for uh, this kind of opening, I can kind of run this down in here. I can move around kind of the uh, supports that are in there and get right alongside the gear and then advance that to take that sample, pull that out, put a cap on it, wipe it off, take the sample. Um, and, you know, what you find is that the grease that we're interested in, in, in testing it's not whatever comes out when we just like stick a screwdriver in there or a cable tie or something. It's the grease that's from the engagement area of these gears. So a lot of the other grease sits in place just kind of waiting for its turn, if you will. We want to sample that grease that's right there in the, in the gear engagement area. And this allows us to target that location with, within the gearbox, pull that exact grease back out and, and form our assessment on that. And that assessment can be as simple as looking at what's inside the clear body on this sampler. It could be, we're in the field, we want to extrude it out, we can put it on a, a nice white piece of paper, extrude that out, look for any kind of discoloration, uh, particulate, uh, darkening of the grease relative to, you know, what the, what the new color would be. Or we can cap it up, uh, send it to a laboratory and get more advanced analysis, including wear particles, looking at the condition, you know, and some of the things that I heard today about uh, grease condition, about wear, about ext life extension, uh, a lot of things we can assess as we get into the later stages of the, the life of some of these things by looking at how much wear is there and how severe is that wear, and do that on a case-by-case -case with these, uh, these gearboxes with that. So I'm going to uh, open it up now to any questions that you might have from this demonstration, either from the STEM feed or from the, uh, from the demonstration of the sampling devices for the gearbox. Sorry, who was that? Okay. All right. So I'll show this. This is another uh, one of the uh, stem feet that was made. This was a, a triple aught. You can see obviously smaller diameter. It's going to be made with the smaller housing that we have at the triple aught. Uh, the length of this is really going to depend on the maximum height of a stem position that you would want to lubricate. So if, if you've got the flexibility to kind of, you know, close the valve, lower the stem, what have you, you wouldn't need this to be as long per se, but the longer it is, the more, you know, the, the greater the position, let's say, of the stem in height, you can still get in there and, and lubricate that. And the first time through, you're going to have to fill up this space with grease, but then after that, it's going to kind of stay in there, and that's why we have the, you know, the foreign, foreign ex material exclusion cover on there. Uh, and we can then you know, go from location to location. So generally, the folks who are doing this are buying uh, a couple of different designs uh, for the, the, the ones that they want to use it for, the MODs, and then being able to use them on multiple machines. So it becomes something you can leverage well and uh, pretty cost-effective when you can you know, use this on 10, 20, 30 different valves, uh, depending on what you have to look at. Okay, 
Thanks for the opportunity, guys.